Welcome to Entry Point Faith. Join us each week to discover fresh meaning in the world and find faith your way. Now, here is Pastor Nancy Lafferty. Many years ago in England, a circus elephant named Bozo, who was very popular with the public, suddenly experienced a change in personality. He began attacking his trainers, and the manager decided he needed to get rid of the elephant. But a man who had heard of the troubles with this elephant begged the manager, give me two minutes in the cage alone with him. The manager turned and said, I, you'll be killed. I don't think so, said the man. Do I have your permission? So the door to the cage was unlocked and the man stepped inside. He stood quite still, a faint smile on his face as he began to talk to the animal. He seemed to be speaking some foreign language. Slowly, as the man continued to talk, the elephant raised his head and began to sway side to side as he listened to the man talking, docile as a pup now. He wound his trunk around the man's waist and the two walked slowly around the ring. After a while, the man bade farewell to the elephant and left the cage. He'll be all right now, he said to the manager. You see, he's an Indian elephant and none of you spoke his language, Hindustani. I would advise you to get someone around here who speaks Hindustani. He was just homesick. I think that feeling of homesickness is something we've all felt at some point in our life. The desire to be around someone who speaks our language, to be with people who get us. It's the root of longing for home. Let's look at another story of someone who's away from home and is feeling more than a little homesick. This story is found in the Bible, in the book of Luke. A man had two sons. When the younger told his father, I want my share of your estate now, instead of waiting until you die, his father agreed to divide his wealth between his two sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all of his belongings and took a trip to a distant land, and there he wasted all of his money on parties and prostitutes. About the time his money was gone, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. The boy became so hungry that even the pods that he was feeding the swine looked good to him, and no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired men have food enough and to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired man. So he returned home to his father. Now let's pause the story right there for a minute. You may recognize this story as that of the lost son, or as it has come to be known, the prodigal son. Prodigal describes someone as spending money on or resources recklessly, or as I like to say, unemployed teenager. Listen to that last line again. He returned home to his father. What is it about going home? What is it deep down inside of each one of us that longs for that place that we call home? Is it the feeling of safety, security, love? 
Is it the hope that we will always be welcomed, forgiven, taken care of despite our stupid choices? Do we go home because we have unfinished business? Do we make that journey out of habit, out of obligation, out of necessity, or out of love? Poet Maya Angelou wrote, The ache for home lives in all of us, the safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. So let's go back now to the second half of the prodigal son story and see what happens. The younger son decides to go home to his father, and when he appears, his father runs to him, making quite a scene. His father hugs him and yells for the servants to bring robes to put on him and expensive rings. He calls for a huge feast and a celebration in honor of the return of his long lost son. In the meantime, the older son was out in the field working hard. When he heard the party music, he got angry and jealous, and he refused to even go into the party at all. He complained to his dad that he was the one working hard, and his dad had never thrown him this kind of celebration. It didn't make any sense that his brother blew all of his money, but he still got rewarded. The father explained to his oldest son. Look, dear son, the father said to him, you and I are very close and everything I have is yours, but it is right to celebrate for he is your brother and he was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. Now, that's a nice story. And it's filled with opportunities for discussion and debate, appreciation and confusion. I have to say that the first time I heard this story in Sunday school, I thought it was the stupidest thing I'd ever heard. I immediately took the older brother's perspective and I grew angry at a father who would just take his older son for granted and then celebrate the return of his idiot younger son and throw him a party. I wouldn't have gone into that party either if I'd been the older brother. And then I became a parent. I suffered those terrifying moments of having misplaced my child who was either asleep on the floor of his closet or who was playing in a brand new place at the neighbor's house. There is nothing like that feeling of losing and then finding your child. When my oldest son moved out on his own and then came back for a visit, I completely understood the dad scene with the feast and the robe and the ring and the party. I get that the money lost didn't matter as much as the son being found safe. Also, I think if we are honest, We can recognize that we have each had prodigal child moments in our own lives. Times when we have lost our way or we've been stupid with our money or our associations or our skills or our time. We have all needed to get home, to get squared away and remember who we are. We have hoped that all could somehow be forgiven. So we are in the time of the year when for many of us, our minds turn toward home. We want to go home for the holidays. We long for the place and the people. We want to recapture the feelings and the warmth We rejoin distant and widespread members of the family. We chalk up the end of a college semester together and we marvel at taller children. We drag out dusty board games and cautiously (laughs) dare to sit and talk. We sleep in awkward beds and we reminisce about childhood memories. 
More than any other time of the year, we gather family members together and we tell family stories. It's an important ritual. It's a significant bonding time. Sadly, for many reasons, some of us don't have that physical home to return to, or it's gone, or the people are gone, or it was never there to begin with. That's when the holiday season gets tough and lonely. That's when we need to find the spirit of home and embrace it. Cecilia Ahern wrote these words, home isn't a place, it's a feeling. So perhaps we strive a little harder to find the feelings of home and we wrap those feelings around us. We take care of our need for home by finding people or activities or hobbies or careers that feed us and center us and give us that feeling of being at home within ourselves. So I ask, what does the story of the prodigal son have to do with us and our homes and this holiday season? Well, here's a kind of corny but radical idea. Perhaps when we get together with our people this holiday season, we could try something. We could take time to see each person as a prodigal child returning home. Let's be excited to see them. Let's jump up and welcome our visitors with hugs and with smiles. No matter what has happened, let's focus on their presence and forgive past difficulties. Perhaps this visitor is a person who was once lost to us and is now found. On many levels, that is a possibility. All we each need in this life is the feeling that our lives matter to someone. Let's do our part to provide that response. All we ever need to know is that we have a place in this world. All we each need to know is that we are worthy, worthy of forgiveness, worthy of attention, worthy of welcoming hugs and large feasts, (laughs) worthy of celebration. Are you willing to try that with me? Poet Robert Frost wrote, home is the place where when you have to go there, they have to take you in. So if they come to our house this holiday season, Let's take them in. And as we do so, let's welcome home each prodigal son and prodigal daughter with open arms. Amen. Thanks for listening in on this week's discussion on Entry Point Faith. You can join the Entry Point Faith community in person every Sunday at 1030 a.m. at Connor Prairie in Fishers, Indiana. For more information and a transcript of Dancy's messages, visit EntryPointOnline.org. Entry Point Faith is brought to you in partnership with MyPodcast.media.